welcome again to Prophetic Reflective News on HRN Revive TV. I'm your host today, Arnold Threat, and we will continue to be looking at uh, Paul's writings in uh, chapters 9, 10, and 11 to the Romans. And if you followed us on our last uh, session, you will understand that he is in fact writing to the tribes of Israel and uh, he so much loved his fellow brethren. And I'll put in a little plug here for us today that we should be as zealous for our fellow brothers in the faith and our communities and our families as Paul was, who was willing to be beaten, I think five times, just so he could continue to go to Jerusalem and be in fellowship in the temple while he was on planet earth. So as we look at these things that Paul's writing for and to us, please hear and understand his heart and let us adopt some of that same zeal in our life for the kingdom as it soon approaches and we will be refined and reflective, hopefully revealing the true Elohim to those on planet earth. So join me in chapter 10 now as we begin in verse 1. Brethren, truly my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh on behalf of Israel is for it to be saved. For I testify to them that they have zeal to Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of Yahweh and seeking to establish their own righteousness, they did not submit to the righteousness of Yahweh, for Messiah is the goal of the Torah for righteousness to everyone that believes. Here Paul gives us the definition that we are in so much need of in following the Torah that the goal of the Torah was Yeshua himself who at the very beginning, according to John's gospel, and we see it in the book of Genesis itself, that he was there at creation for when Yahweh said, let there be light, Yeshua made that happen. We also see that in the very end in the eternal kingdom as it comes down. <clears throat> we see that there is not a need for the moon or for the sun because Yeshua himself and the Father will be our light. So it just makes sense that Yeshua said, let there be light. He illuminated the universe at that point in time. So by translating the word uh, here, end of Torah is often uh, detrimental to our belief and our understanding. It should have read, read, as we have said here, by translating the word gold as in, many people believe that the Torah was done away with. But the end is not the right translation of that word there. It should be either gold or best results. So as we look at these translations sometime that does not do the truth righteous justice, we see that this is one of those things where people often quote Paul here saying, well, it's the end of the Torah. But really, it's not. Uh, it's the gold of the Torah. So when, when we see it's used right, Yeshua is the goal of any true believer. Our desire for our nation should be as strong as Paul's was. And again, I encourage you, that we would have that same zeal. So in verse five we find, for Moses writes of the righteousness, which is of the Torah, the man doing these things shall live by them, the Torah that is. But righteousness of faith says this, do not say in your heart, who will go up into heaven, that is to bring down Messiah, for who has descended into the abyss of Sheol and brought Messiah from the dead? I would like to interject maybe a thought here at this point in time. 
Could the religious elite of Yeshua's day said, well, nobody consulted me that you should be the Messiah, so we're rejecting you. Now that's just an Arnoldism, and I'm presenting that to you as possible thought there because it's very clear in the conversations with Yeshua that the scribes and Pharisees knew perfectly well who he was. In verse 8 it says, But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we proclaim. Because if you confess the Master Yeshua with your mouth and believe in your heart that Yahweh raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Now, that doesn't stand alone by itself. Please understand something here. A lot of denominations said, well, if I just confess Yeshua or Jesus in my heart, then I'm going to be saved. I can go live like I want to. But Yeshua himself said, and I will remind you, as I've previously said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So uh, the Hebrew language is actually a verb language, which means that you have to take some action in your belief. It's not just you saying something with your mouth. So in verse 10 we see, For the heart which believes in him shall be declared righteous, and the mouth that confesses him shall live. So we see it's a twofold thing here. Not only do you confess it with your mouth, but you live it out. You walk it out as Yeshua commanded us to do. For the scripture says in verse 11, Everyone believing in him will not be ashamed. For there is no difference both of Jew and of non-Jew. For the same master of all is rich towards all the ones calling on him. So here I think Paul is again giving us a little more insight when he says Jew here because he was a Benjaminite and he knew exactly who the Jews were and he previously stated they were keepers of the oracles and the commandments and that was their assignment as well as bringing forth Messiah through the lineage of the Jews. So Paul here is giving us a little insight when he calls these guys the Jews. Now, it's a common term today to call all of Israel a Jew, but that's not really uh, true because only the tribe of Judah and part of Benjamin and some of the Levites, and there may be some scattering of the other tribes in the physical land today, but when Yahweh brings us all home, all of us will be there. All 12 tribes will be there, at least a remnant of that, as we will see in a future session. So then, as we look then at verse 13, we see, For everyone who ever may call on the name of Yahweh will be saved. How then may they call on one into whom they have not believed? And how may they believe on one whom they have not heard? And how may they hear without a preacher. And I would take that term there, preacher, and say you and I are those same preachers because we have that word within us and we are to be salt and light to the nations. And woe be unto us if we're not that because we might be talking to someone who is ready to receive Yeshua and walk in the Torah when we're out walking around in our neighborhood or in the store or talking to somebody on the street. So in verse 15 we see, And how may they preach if they're not sent, even as it has been written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news of peace, of those preaching good things. But not all obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Yahweh, who has believed our report, then faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Yahweh. So it's still a two-fold step here. It's not just a one part. We have to have both parts. We have to be covered by the blood of Yeshua and we have to be following the teaching and instructions of the Father. And if you're out there listening to this broadcast or watching, I would encourage you to please look at the words of Messiah he tells us unequivocally that that is true. We cannot believe and trust him for salvation without keeping the house rules, which start in Genesis and go all the way through. 
So please be encouraged to do that. So we, as we see, daily searching of the scriptures is very important. And only the scriptures that were available here during Paul's writings was Genesis through Malachi. So the whole New Testament, or the Brett Hadashah, as we call it in the Hebrew language, had not been written yet. Only partials of it had been written, and it could only be passed around in a scroll form and had not been canonized as we have it today. So the basic scriptures they had was what we would call would be the Old Testament. So by searching, we see that just verbal understanding is not enough. But it's the doing that matters. The proclamation with your mouth and the doing of what you say you believe in. So we have no excuse today, right? Verse 18, he says so. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, rather. Into all the earth their voice went out into the ends of the world their words. We're without excuse, ladies and gentlemen. The word has been put out. Even in this very end time, we see that there will be 144,000 evangelists to all the nations that remain on the globe during this last time, during the Great Tribulation, who will be bringing the pure gospel and everyone will be truly without excuse. So in verse 19, we see this. But I say, did not Israel know First, Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by a non-nation, by an unwise nation. I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and says, I was found by those not seeking me. I became known to those who inquired after me. But to Israel, he says, all the day I stretched out my hands to a disobedient and contradicting people. So the nation of Israel was mandated by Yahweh at Sinai to be salt and light to the whole nation all over the globe. Yet they forsake their duty. But Yahweh is saying, I have put in people's minds who don't even know what an Israelite is basically to search me out and they're finding me. So that would go back to what Yeshua says. Had these people not cried out to me in a conversation with the Pharisees of his day, if they would not had been saying, Hosanna, 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 as he came in on Shabbat day prior to his crucifixion, Yeshua says, these very rocks would have cried out. So nature uh, is crying out for us to know the creator of the universe and his son Yeshua. Today, Yahweh has a spiritual nation of set-apart believers around the globe who are his ambassadors of his kingdom, and he will fulfill in them all the purposes and plans that he has set forth in his word. He has promised to restore the physical nation of Israel was accomplished in 1948. And in chapter 11, Paul will compare the physical nation of Israel to the spiritual nation of Israel. So I encourage you to be tuned for uh, the next session where we will be talking about the spiritual nation of Israel who we are a part of. So again, this is Arnold Three bidding you shalom. <music>